In just 99 days, U.S. citizens will head to the polls to cast their ballot for president in what can only be described as a year of tremendous upheaval in that country. The stakes are incredibly high. Four more years of President Donald Trump or former Vice President Joe Biden. Here in Canada, there are more than 600,000 American citizens who are eligible to vote this November, and they're getting a big push to do just that from none other than the 2019 NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors. The team's head coach and several players have just issued a public service announcement encouraging all Americans living in Canada to register to vote. Nick Nurse is the head coach of the Toronto Raptors. He joins us from Orlando, Florida. Hi, Mr. Nurse. Great to have you with us on the program. Hi. So, Thanks for having me. <laughs> I want to start off and ask you about this sort of uh, push that you and some of the players have made to try and encourage Americans who are living in Canada to vote. Explain to me from your perspective why you thought that was a really important thing to do. Well, it kind of started with the, the George, George Floyd death and, and the head coaches around the NBA kind of quickly formed a, a committee. We were trying to get active and one of the one of the many things we did was the voting thing and uh for example down in atlanta they're using their arena as a as a poll uh polling station where you can actually go and vote uh the same place that the atlanta hawks play we obviously can't do that in toronto it's a little different but we found kind of our niche there with being able to support this is you know like like myself i've lived over i've lived in four countries and and um now i can convey to people how to how to get their ballots and how to vote when you're when you're living abroad and we we reached out to fvap.gov and and um have just been out campaigning there's 650,000 of us uh, united states citizen we believe uh, in canada ish and we're trying to get them all registered to vote in the upcoming election yeah, in preparing for this, I, I was looking up, trying to figure out, well, how many of them actually do vote? Uh, and, I, and the Federal Voting Assistance Program, it's an estimate, but they said around 5.3% of that figure. So we're looking at, let's say, less than 33,000 of the eligible voters actually cast a ballot. What's your message to the rest of them this time? And why do you think you know, this election, from your perspective, is one where they should, they should, they should not stay home? Yeah, I mean... Uh, first of all, that's an incredible number, isn't it? Really, really, really um, amazing that five five percent of people vote and, uh, here. But but I understand it a little bit. I think that I, I I've already mentioned I've lived in countries and you say, well, I didn't know how to do it, or I don't know, I didn't didn't prefer either candidate, or my vote doesn't count enough, or whatever whatever the excuse is piling up for uh, U.S. citizens living abroad to to not vote. It's it's. You know, and you just touched on it as well. This this time we got to vote, man. We gotta we gotta change it. We gotta we gotta we gotta be the voice of change. We gotta exercise our, our fundamental right to vote. Um, there's so many things that need to change, and this is where it has to start with with voting. I've read some of your comments before on why you didn't always vote, right? You're you're yes. you, you, you 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 you're you're one of them, right? Like everybody goes through it. Everybody's sure. young at one point. They don't yes. know. They don't necessarily identify it as the most important thing. What can what kind of light can you shed from your perspective on how you felt it, at those times and why it wasn't a priority and what's shifted for you now? Well, um, I mentioned some of the things before, but but a lot of you know again you could I could. I could pile up. I just gave you three excuses. I could probably give you a few more that I, <laughs> I don't think my, my void of my vote will be counted fairly. Uh, I'll get a lot, you know, it'll, you know, there's, it'll be some, um, you know, misappropriated voting or whatever it is, but it, w whatever those excuses are is, is, um, I, again, I'm, I'm sitting here saying that we cannot have those excuses and make them anymore and, and more than happy to try to push to help people realize that it is very simple to do it and then when it when it comes time to do it to do it and um listen i, I again it's it's um there's a lot going on um in a lot of countries around the world but there's a lot going on in the united states and we need we need to change get, get change in there and we can do that by voting What's your sense of, I guess, among people you're talking to, players or other others, other citizens that you're encouraging to vote? Do you have a sense that this time will be more? Like, do you feel the urgency more? Do you think people feel it more? It's different. Yeah, I, I think it's much different. I would, I would imagine that the, the turnout this time around is going to be probably record numbers. 
And when you say, when you talk about change, are you, do you want people to uh, just vote period or are you uh, encouraging them to vote one way or the other? I'm encouraging them to vote, but I'm also encouraging them to try to try to vote down the ballot, right? And try to understand, um, you know, their, their state and who they're voting for and what those people stand for and, and go down the ballot and vote as well. I think that's important that they understand that, that they can do that as well. And I wanted to, Mr. Nurse, if you don't mind, ask you as well about uh, some of the stuff uh, with Black Lives Matter and in particular your team, which which has garnered so much attention lately uh, for, for all the right reasons, I think. Uh, you know, th I'm thinking about the bus emblazoned, of course, with the uh, decal, the decal, sorry, of, the, of Black Lives Matter. Your players, lots of them will, will play with slogans like Black Lives Matters on their jerseys instead of their last names. What do you, what do you think or what's your sort of take on how your team has impacted this conversation or how you hope the team impacts the conversation? Well, I think we've been pretty good. I think that, you know, again, I thought the buses were, were awesome statement by our team uh, coming, coming here. You know, there's been even talk about, well, will, will us back playing basketball take away from the movement? Um, but we certainly saw it as a chance to continue the message and, and do that. I think our, our, we're really proud. I think we are. We're really, really proud of uh, Toronto's um, diversity. I think we're proud of our organization's diversity. We, we've got such a diverse team and and um, culture at our at our organization that it, that I think we should be out there um, talking about it. And and our players, I think, have been good and will continue to be good. But I but I also want. You know, again, there's 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 much more than messaging and buses and and jerseys and pins and T-shirts. Um, there's much more that, that needs to be done. Was there any hesitation uh, on your part or anyone sort of at the, the, the that manages the team or that owns the team? Was there any hesitation to go out there with the kinds of things that that you have gone out there with? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I think there's always some dialogue and discussion and, um, I don't, I don't think there's, there's hesitation. I think that this is something we all, it's, it's, it's an interesting time. Right. And I think it is, um, um, going to be a moment in history. Um, but let's, and let's hope we can make meaningful change. But I think it's, it's certainly sparked a lot of discussions. I've had several with my staff, with my team, with my organization um, I think there's been a level of closeness um, because we've shared and I've heard some things from my players that probably wouldn't have been shared um, or hadn't been shared before so um, it's interesting times I think we're walking pretty good arm in arm here as, as a basketball family I think the NBA's done a incredible job I think uh, our organization's done great and I'm really proud of the players just for um, you know, how they've handled things so far. There, there has been a lot of positive reaction to, to the way in which uh, the league in particular has handled this. I just wanted to ask you one uh, final question on one of the points that has come forward from uh, Norman Powell. He's been ro pretty vocal about his anger around the jersey policy. He says the league, yeah. just for our viewers, is limiting players to a, quote, cookie-cutter list of social justice messages. He wants to wear a, an Am I Next slogan. And I just wanted to know from your perspective, do you feel like the league should, should bend a bit on this? Do you think they're being... Uh, they're they're doing enough, I guess, to create uh, space for social and racial justice, or or could they do more? What do you think? Well, I think that um, again, I, I totally respect uh, Norman's viewpoint on this, and you know, I, I just think that the players um, association, you know, which which Kyle Lowry, one of our other players, works really closely with Chris Paul, you know, so, some some of the players around the league. Uh, in conjunction with the league, came up with this kind of list. I think that it started really long, and 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 they just wanted to kind of get it um, a little more concise. And Norman's right; it's a little bit cooker, cookie cutter ish. If that's a word, cookie cutter ish. <laughs> um, but you know, and, and he doesn't feel like any of those fit him, or he wanted to be a little um, original. I mean, it'll be interesting. You know, I would I would encourage him to. <laughs> do what he feels. I'm not going to tell him. I'm not going to tell him not to wear what he wants to wear, or if he wants to, if he wants to go somewhere. I mean, there, there there's um, ways to express your individuality that I don't think um, 
um, is going to hurt anything too bad. Well, you're, you won't tell them that, but you certainly are telling people to vote, and the message got through loud and clear uh, during our interview. Thank you, Mr. Nurse. Pleasure to have you with us. Thanks a lot. Enjoyed it. You too. Have a great day. Okay. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.